This is a short video showing the Demon Dialer uh, prototype board. You can see I programmed up five of the uh, Demon Dialer chips into the 68HC705 C8 uh, UV erasable versions of the chip. I also have some of my own blue box design, which uh, is just different philosophically from the Demon Dialer, but has a lot of the similar functions, but I think the Demon Dialer is a lot more programmable, which is really nice. So here's the, um, here's the prototype, powering it off uh, three uh, AA cells in series, which gives about 4.8 volts, which in my experience is adequate to power the um, 68HC705 for probably uh, months, even years at a time. I've got a a CW keyer based on this chip that um, has had the same batteries in it for five years and they're still not drained and it's been in uh, power down standby mode. So um, what else here? I've got a uh, the audio output section. Uh, rather than have the amplifier built in, I just connected it to this old uh, Radio Shack Archer uh, speaker amplifier unit. I think it has an LM386 in it. Uh, down here, you can see the R2R uh, ladder network that I modified to use uh, 10K and 20K resistors. This takes uh, seven output bits off of the microcontroller. And by feeding them and controlling the, uh, the output on those bits, you can generate uh, different analog voltages um, that are then fed into this amplifier. So I'm just tapping directly off the ladder. Um, uh, network um, ladder network output directly into that. I've got a um, a three by four matrix keypad that I had that's wired in per the uh, schematic. There's a couple of pull down uh, resistors, two here and two here on different spots that connect to the um, to the row um, the row pins. Those are needed by the uh, scanning code. Here I'm using a four megahertz um, ceramic resonator for the frequency determining part. I found I had to put that 10 mega ohm resistor across the two outer pins and then ground the center pin. It's a three terminal device and then connect it into the uh, oscillator pins. Without that resistor, it would not start up reliably when I would press the, the shift button to uh, reactivate the circuit once it powered down. The uh, power down, the, uh, the shift button here and the power on button is connected to the IRQ line, which is, I think, pin, pin two or three on the chip, pin two. And uh, when it goes to sleep, the only way to really wake it up is using a, um, an external interrupt. So that button provides it, but it also provides the uh, shift function. So it's, it does dual duty. It's a wake up uh, switch and it's also a, a shift switch detected by the software. Other than that, I got a decoupling cap there, small electrolytic to provide some voltage reserve. And there's not much more to it. I mean, that's about it. So um, the, um, the device kind of shows its European origins. Uh, it's it's um, heavily slanted towards the European tone modes like CCITT number four, CCITT number five, and so forth, and there's a couple of other R2, uh, analog R2 uh, signaling systems that were in use uh, in Europe at the time. As a, a telephone engineer, I had some experience writing software to do the uh, compelled analog R2 that was transported on T1 circuits, so I'm kind of familiar with uh, some of what's going on there. Um, there's some other modes too. I love the programmability of it because you can program specific frequencies and you can set up your own tone signaling methods. The one disadvantage is that the 68HC705 uh, does not have any double EEPROM for non-volatile storage. So everything is stored, all the operating parameters and customization is stored in the, um, in the RAM. And if the battery supply is interrupted, all that gets wiped out. There is a provision to back up and restore that through the serial port. I don't have the serial port connected here, but eventually when I put this on a circuit board, I will add a RS-232 interface chip and connector for connecting to a PC and doing those backups. Uh, very good security on this. So right now it's in power down mode. If I press it, 
you hear that whoop, and then you have to you have to press on the password, which is one, two, three, four. Then you get the little victory sound there indicating that you can use all the special modes. Um, if you don't do that, uh, it'll the uh, dialer remains in the DTMF mode as a DTMF dialer, and it can't won't do anything else. So it's very stealthy, quite effective. The unit after 30 seconds will play some warning beeps and then a um, high to low tone. There's the warning beep. And now we're powered off again. It can power on by pressing the, um, the key here connected to the interrupt line. And now you have to re-enter the password. You have to do that every time. And um, what I also like is that the tone sounds as long as the buttons are held down, other than, unlike having a um, you know short fixed duration length like I did on my on my box. Well, one of my boxes, my uh, 68 HC705 box does have a continuous mode on it as well. So to, to uh, shift modes, you have to kind of hold down the shift button and uh, press uh, the star key and then the mode number. Uh, I'm going to have to put this down to do it. So let's try it. All right, now we're in uh, CCITT number five mode. You can hear we're generating MF tones, MF rather than DTMF. Instead of 2600, you've got the uh, dual tone um, disconnect and uh, seize tones that were used by the CCITT. It used a form of spurt signaling rather than the continuous 2600. However, by holding the shift key down and pressing six, you can still get the 2600 tones. Now the frequencies for the people with good ears are a little bit off because I'm using a four megahertz crystal, but the, um, the design actually calls for a uh, four, 4.194304 crystal, which I do have on order. The uh, the author of the code recommended I can change one of the timer values that sets the the internal sampling rate of uh, of a timer that generates the um, the tones to compensate for the lower crystal frequency. Most of the control functions don't really care about a slightly lower frequency, but the frequency determining uh, interrupt service routines definitely do care about it. So. Uh, he did send me a, an adjustment that I can make, and I have not tested it yet. So the, the tones are just slightly off here. I'll probably just leave it as is and just use the correct crystal instead of the resonator. But I would like to, to give it a try on the breadboard here at some time. So I may erase one or more of the chips and, um, and try, um, try it out that way. So let's see. You can also program macros, which are kind of cool. Macro is just a series of key presses that can be played back. So, power up. All right, it's unlocked. This is going to get a little blurry because I need two hands, so I'll try to try to do this. So I'm going to go into macro mode by pressing the shift key and the, let's see, the pound key. And now in macro mode, now I'm going to program one by holding shift and one down. And now I'll type um, I just typed all the all the buttons basically. Now I'll hold the shift key down and pound and then pound again. And now we're still in macro mode, but we have programmed the uh, sequence into position one. And I can adjust the timing on that with some other commands which I won't go into but there's the macro mode. And we can get out of macro mode just by hitting the pound key, which is not a valid macro number. And now we're back into manual mode. So very nice. Uh, I'm gonna get this all packaged up nicely into a, uh, a little package and uh, have some fun with it. This is something, this box I read about in 91 and really wanted one. I was very interested in phone freaking. In fact, I got into my career based on my interest in telephones that was developed as seeing a uh, freakers use some of the blue box devices and reading about 
it in the Esquire article and through other other sources, some from the phone company. And um, it resulted in a 35-year career with the uh, telecom um, industry. So um, I, I like to uh, revisit it. This should be perfect for using my Project MF server, which is a publicly accessible telephone system that can be dialed up and uh, used to Blue Box using the US R1 system, 2600 seizure and supervision-based system. So very cool. My hat's off to Hacktick and the uh, programmers that developed this and the, for their help in getting a hold of the source code after, after over 30 years. They were very generous in sharing that with me. And fortunately, I had all of the programming devices and software that I had saved for the last three decades to uh, actually program and compile or an assemb assemble the code into a usable form and fortunately had these chips around as well. So uh, hats off and thanks so much.